all this is dr mobin sayed from drbean.com welcome to one more show and happy halloween let's start today's talk is so first of all these are the gifts for humanity today we have a little spooky gift that i drew all by myself today how do these eyes look i hope you like them okay so let's start with the references so this is drbean.com and this is the landing page there is a link in the description if you would like to get access to another 900 plus lectures for just a very low price of $67 and one time no recurrence no monthly thing and you can return if you like so this is the link in the description here is the study it is a preprint it is from cambridge university uk atypical b cells an impaired SARS-CoV-2 neutralization following booster vaccination in the elderly. So that is the discussion. So uh, I hope you can you can hear me. If not, please let me know. This is the study. It's a preprint. This is a good summary article about that. Then because this study works a lot of lot with the B cell and the type of B cells and the type of T cells. I have included some references if you would like to study a little more about the B cells and T bet B cells and, and exhausted B cells, etc. All of these links are present here. So with this, let's start our discussion. So as usual, we'll do two things. We'll first present the summary and then we will go over the de details. And Kelly, you are absolutely correct. I had promised that when we go above 600,000 subscribers, I will uh, dye my hair blue. So what a coincidence that it is 600,000 subscribers plus Halloween as well. So here I am with my little <laughs> surprise for you. Interestingly, between Facebook and um, YouTube, now we have about 1.2 million. And then if we add Dr. Bean as well, then about 1.4 million uh, strong community. So with this, let's start. So the study is that 70 plus individuals develop exhausted B cells. So I would like you to keep an eye on what is an exhausted B cell. So exhausted B cell, impaired neutralization. So interestingly, these B cells in number were similar to those that were lesser than 70. Even the function of the B cell, the production of antibodies was equal in quantity to those who were lesser than 70 However, the quality of the antibody, the function of the antibody, or as they called it, neutralization potency and breadth of neutralization, these were lesser. And then diminished T cell response as well. So T cell response was also diminished. Nipa, thank you very much. So I'm going to go over the summary first. There are two possible reasons for this. 70 plus, so imagine if I'm 70 plus and I have two AstraZeneca doses as primary. This is a study from UK. So two AstraZeneca primary, that is an adenovirus-based vaccine, then messenger RNA booster. This is the study. So there are a couple of reasons they say for these exhausted B cells and the issue they're seeing with the development of immunity or protection. Number one, they say that older individuals have higher inflammatory state. So older individuals, they usually have inflammatory cells. Immune system is not very um, correctly modulating. Plus, the more senescent cells have a tendency to produce more inflammatory markers. So interferon gamma and interleukin-21 are increased in them. So that is one. 
what is the reason what happens with that Inter interferon gamma and interleukin 21 cause exhaustion of the b cells interestingly they also cause in healthy individuals younger individuals they also are responsible for b cell switching too so it's not that they are always bad we have also seen that interferon gamma when it is produced by the t cells then it can amplify the innate arm cells functions so these Cytokines by themselves are not just the bad things. However, as we age, these inflammatory states increase, and one mediator of that is interferon gamma and IL-21. This increased interferon gamma and IL-21 causes a higher frequency or higher number of exhausted B cells. And so you might ask that, why is that the case? Why does it do that? And I would explain that a little later. First summary, then details. So this is one. What is the takeaway so far? In older age, there are more exhausted B cells. Then AstraZeneca. So somehow my... So when AstraZeneca vaccine is given this is specific for astrazeneca when it is given or you can say that the study is for astrazeneca so maybe it happens from the other primary series as well they did not study that they studied astrazeneca so when astrazeneca vaccine is given it causes the b cell to be to become functional in the non germinal center so, of course, you would say, hey, what is the germinal center? So, those who are uh, medically oriented or are medically uh, medical professionals or students, for them, they know that inside the lymphoid tissue, so that means lymph nodes or spleen or other Peyer's patches and other uh, tissue clusters of lymphoid tissue, inside that tissue, and I'll, I'll, I'll explain that a little later as well, there are rounded areas where b cells are formed and or they are present and they become mature and they become b cells become differentiated and get ready for fight and they become active those areas are called germinal centers outside of the germinal centers the surrounding area towards the outer side of a lymph node or the outer side of the tissue we call that extra germinal center or extra follicular area. I'll explain that later as well. So it seems like when AstraZeneca vaccine is given, it creates more B cells in the extra follicular area compared to germinal center area. So how can I give you an example of this? Imagine that a baby has to be born and instead of baby being born inside a hospital, the baby is born on the road when the mom was going towards the hospital. So now that is an extra hospitaler area, extra follicular area. So those B cells that mature outside of the follicle, these B cells have a higher tendency in older age individuals with the AstraZeneca vaccine to become more exhausted B cells. And there is a reason for that. So we'll keep that reason away so we can kind of figure out what's happening here. So take away so far, 70 years plus, those individuals that were given AstraZeneca, then they were boosted with messenger RNA booster. They had more exhausted B cells, one. And now we have seen two reasons for that. One, in older age, we generally tend to have exhausted B cells because of inflammatory mediators. And secondly, AstraZeneca itself pushes the B cells to be more extra follicular and be exhausted. Second problem, that the antibodies that are produced, the neutralizing antibodies, these antibodies have less potency for neutralization 
and less breadth of coverage. So imagine my head, this blue head is a spike protein and the antibodies can be produced for various parts of this. So what they're saying is in the 70 plus individuals, when the antibodies were produced, they produced a more limited set of antibodies in terms of binding capability or neutralizing capability. So same vaccine set, AstraZeneca plus Moderna, in younger individuals had a more potent and more breadth of antibody binding or neutralization compared to 70 plus. Third problem, the T cells, the T cells are impaired in their function. And why is that interesting? This is the last part of the summary. Then we stop with the summary. If you would like to go back to Halloween and trick and treating, that's fine. T cells, we have done this discussion many times that there are helper T cells, naive helper T cells. They engage with the innate arm cells and then they, the T cells either become T helper 2 and then they go to the B cells and convert the B cells to plasma cells or activate them. Or the naive T cell can go T helper 1 pathway if we have interleukin 12 on them. We have done this discussion before. Naive T cell becomes T helper 1. T helper 1 in turn releases interferon gamma and interleukin 2. Interleukin 2 causes the cytotoxic T cell to become activated. So this T helper 1 pathway is impacted as well. So now think about it. There are two pathways. T helper 2 pathway going to the B cells making antibodies. T helper 1 pathway going to the cytotoxic T cells. Now antibody pathway, the B cells are exhausted. Not all, but a higher percentage compared to lesser than 70. And if you go the T helper 1 pathway, then the helper cells are exhausted. So both pathways are impacted. So I hope then this clarifies why did they do this study? What were they trying to answer? They were trying to answer why in the older age, so let me answer, let's, let me put this over here, impact of age on response to booster and exploration of the mechanism of impaired response. What they said in their study was, in their manuscript, they said, we know empirically, that means from observation, we know that the vaccine booster still has less protection compared to younger boosted individuals from the severe COVID. So they said, we, we were trying to figure out what is the reason, what is the mechanism behind that? We can observe that clinically but we did not know how this is happening. So this is why they did the study. And here is a little more from the manuscript. They said, importantly, somehow my pen is not working, so that's fine. Importantly, we also observed impaired T-cell responses to SARS-CoV-2 spike peptides in the elderly post-boosted or booster both in terms of interferon gamma and IL-2 secretion. So please keep this in mind as well. Interferon gamma is released by T helper 1 to amplify the innate arm. IL-2 is released by T helper 1 to activate the cytotoxic T cells. So when T helper 1 itself is not working correctly, neither it is going to cause the innate arm to be amplified, nor it is going, going to cause the cytotoxic T cell to be activated. Now, if you go the other route and say, well, we will bank on the B cells, then the B cells are also more exhausted uh, compared to the younger people. So such individuals will have a lot of hard time to respond correctly to the uh, virus. Then they say, this expansion of atypical B cells, that is exhausted B cell. Here when you read, so for the undergrad level, immune immunology students, we use the atypical B cell word to say plasma cells or the cells that are active B cells. But when you look at more thoroughly, maybe at a postgraduate level, atypical B cells that are extra follicular, these are the exhausted B cells. 
So there are specific markers. There are many kinds of atypical B cells, but atypical B cells with CD11 plus type markers or Tbet mark markers on them are exhausted T B cells. These are the exhausted B cells authors observed. So this expansion of atypical B cells and impaired T cell responses may contribute to the generation of less affinity matured antibodies with lower neutralization ca capacity post third dose in the elderly. And I've done the discussion about the affinity maturation before as well. What happens is I call them the lo love letters between the follicular dendritic cells and the B cells. So imagine that there is a B cell. I'm going to go here for a second. Imagine that there is a B cell. That B cell has actually become sensitized to an antigen. Let's say this is a spike protein. So B cell actually was able to bind with the spike protein, became active. Now that B cell, active B cell, is sitting in the follicle of a lymph node or germinal center of a lymph node. What happens is next to B cell are sitting follicular dendritic uh, helper cells. What they do is follicular dendritic cell, they keep catching the spike proteins from the fluids in which the spike protein may be or antigen may be, and they keep presenting it to the B cell. So B cell continues to have a chance to continue to hone in, to continue to become more expert in trying to bind with the antigen. This is called follicular maturation because this maturation of the B cell's capability happens inside the follicle of the lymphoid tissue. Now what they're saying is, if I go back to my presentation here, what they're saying is that it seems like because these B cells are outside of the follicle, they are extra follicular B cells, the T cells are not able to mature them. The T cells are not able to give them affinity maturation. This is like if you have to go to gym to get more powerful <laughs> muscles. But if you stand outside the gym, you're not going to get the maturation or the help from the coach. So then you would not be strong. So that is what happens to these B cells. All together, our data reveal the extent and potential mechanistic underpinnings of the impaired vaccine responses, look, impaired vaccine responses present in the elderly after a booster dose, contributing to their increased susceptibility to COVID-19 infection. So if I unravel this, what they're saying is, elderly after the booster still are susceptible to COVID-19 uh, infections and they were wondering why and these are the mechanisms they observed. They observed exhausted B cells, they observed impaired T cells, they observed incorrectly working or less potent and less broad antibody responses. That's it. So if you just wanted to see what is the summary, <laughs> 18 minutes long summary, that is it. Take away booster after AstraZeneca in 70 plus year. They had younger individuals as well, younger than 70. And these individuals did not show these things. So this is 70 plus. Okay, so with this, Let's now continue with the details of this study. So if you just wanted to go and do trick and treating, thank you very much for uh, <laughs> listening in. Now the details. So details are, and they agree that this is a weakness. They had, I think, about 60 individuals. Then as they started working with them, final selection was 36 people. 13 of them were 70 plus. So small, small group, small study. And they agree with that, that our study is small as a limit. The individuals were in two groups. One group was lesser than 70, other group was 70 plus. They all had two doses of AstraZeneca and a booster. I should have written plus booster here as well. 
median age was 67. There was nobody above 75. So they considered above 70 and the behavior 70 and above to be the same as the age increases further. They also made sure that the participants were IgG N negative, immunoglobulin G N. N is the immunoglobulin against the N protein of the COVID virus. What that means is they excluded anyone who may have been infected. So these were the individuals only vaccinated and not infected before the vaccine, after the vaccine. They were just not infected, but vaccinated only. That is a study. What they did was they drew their blood, these participants, one month after the second dose of AstraZeneca, six months after the second dose of AstraZeneca, and one month after the booster. That was the setup. What they measured from this blood co collection, they measured IgG, immunoglobulin G, for spike. They measured IgG for N. And as I said before, just to make sure that they would exclude anyone who was infected or had been infected. Neutralization antibodies against wild type. So they created pseudo virions and they tried these antibodies against the wild type or the Wuhan type, Delta and Omicron. Then in the peripheral blood, they found following kind of cells. They found B cells, they found CD4 or helper T cells, they found CD8 or cytotoxic T cells, they found monocytes, classical and non-classical. I saw Rima over here. Rima, you know that one of the objections on us was that Dr. Bean says classical and non-classical monocytes and that is wrong, it doesn't exist. Even in this manuscript, they talked about classical and non-classical monocytes. Then they talk about dendritic cells they found. Dendritic cells are the innate arm phagocytic and presentation cells, which were also classical, which means they can be non-classical. And then plasma cytoid dendritic cells that were also present, natural killer cells, immune system innate arm, other innate arm lymphoid cells, mucosa-associated invariant T cells or mites, and... Um, if you read their manuscript, you will also read about cytotoxic CD4 cells. So normally the cytotoxic cells on the acquired arm side are CD8 positive cells. But cytotoxic CD4 cells are also present. So if we go back to how people threw tantrum, that Mobin talks about classical and non-classical monocytes, here from this script, I'm talking about CD8 positive cytotoxic cells and CD4 positive cytotoxic cells as well. Okay, so continuing. What they did was, I mean, it's such a beautiful study. What they did was, after having these cells, do you know they sorted every single cell out with the uh, fluoroscopy and those little pipette-like structures in which they pass one cell at a time and they observe what kind of a cell is that. So they looked at cell by cell through their computers and sorted out 93,000-ish cells that fulfilled their criteria to further observe them. <laughs> Can you imagine there are researchers that have their computers going and sorting every one cell? So... Now, before we look further into their study, it is important for us to realize how B cells mature. So again, I'm not going to go in lots of details, but generally what happens is B cells are formed in bone marrows. So vertebral column, sternum, flat bones, then also part of humerus, part of femur, in normal healthy individuals, even in the higher age, these are the bones that make bone marrow cells, and one of them is B cell. So within the bone marrow, of course, there are stem cells that live in the bone marrow. So here in my diagram, this guy is a stem cell. That stem cell makes a pro-B cell. So the first baby B cell 
is called a pro B cell. And remember, the definition of a stem cell is a cell that can make other cells and its own kind as well. It can replenish itself. So pro B cells are formed. We are still in the bone marrow. Pro B cells then mature further and become pre B cells. We are still in the bone marrow. Then pre B cells become immature B cells. This is actually still progression towards maturity. So imagine from baby to a little, you know, infant, and then from there, a toddler, and so on. So immature B cells, we are still in the bone marrow. Immature B cells are then released in the blood circulation from where they will go and attach to some places in the spleen or pious patches, which are the lymphoid tissue in the GIT or uh, lymph nodes. And there, when they enter there, they're called naive B cells. So this is like an intern, <laughs> an intern who comes to an office to start their first day of work. So they really are not a professional yet, but they are in a professional place. So that intern B cell that enters the lymphoid tissue and says, I'm here to start working, that B cell, when it was in the bone marrow, it was called immature. When it is in the uh, lymph node, it is or lymphoid tissue, it is called naive B cell. It is given more respect. Okay, then within the lymph node, it then starts maturing further. And if it finds an antigen to bind with, if it finds an enemy to bind with, and if there is a helper T cell that says, yes, yes, attack, then it becomes a naive activated B cell which then goes to a germinal center that is a little... So if I go back here and increase the size of this lymph node, and if you see this, here in the lymph node, this is a germinal center. Within the... Sorry, this is a follicle, this green thing. Within the follicle, there is a central area called germinal center, which is further divided into a dark zone and a light zone. But anyways, B cells are here. Then there are follicular B cells here. And this area outside of this follicle is called extra follicular area. This is also where B cells can become activated. Now, please remember, why am I going through all of this? B cells usually over here within the follicle need T cells help to become active and they are they are given affinity maturation in this area as well because there are follicular helper T cells sitting there. There are coaches sitting there. You can say this is the gym for a B cell. And not only a gym, it is where the B cell increase in number. That is called proliferation. This is also where they become mature further. This is called differentiation. This is also where they become better in connecting with their antigens. This is called affinity maturation. But there are B cells outside as well that can become activated even without sometimes help of the T cells. So those outside extra follicular B cells, why are they becoming B cells and active without the need for a T cell? They are there to provide a very rapid response. And for that, even without the T cells, if there is sufficient saturation of their receptors, they can become activated and they can become memory cells as well. And this is this area, this extra follicular area. If there are B cells there that become activated there, a larger proportion in 70 plus year individuals becomes exhausted B cells. And again, if you said why, because as we discussed before, interferon gamma is higher in such individuals and IL-21 is higher. So if there are more exhausted B cells, then there is going to be incorrect behavior of the immune system. There is going to be in incorrect response of the immune system. Immune system is going to say, well, I have the antigen. I am here, I am responding, but the response is B-class response. It is, that's a pun, right? C-class response or D-class response. And so we think that, hey, we gave a booster. Everything is good. The B-cells are proliferated. There are lots of B-cells. There are antibodies produced, but the response is still not correct. And then we say, why does this happen? 
And here is the answer. This is the study that is presenting that answer. So anyways, I'm going to go back from this little follicle and here. So these B cells then become activated. They migrate in the germ center. I hope you understand this, that germ center is here. Then they become post-germinal center. So they come out of the germinal center as well. They become memory cell as well. Then they become plasma cell. Plasma cells are actively making B cells. Some of those plasma cell can go and live in the bone marrow as well. And we have done this discussion before. Some memory cells come out of the lymph node, circulate in the tissue and, and the blood. And then some of them can go and live in the bone marrow as well to the detriment of some of us that if incorrect B cells start living there, they would make incorrect responses and create autoimmune disorders. So anyways, this is a life cycle of a B cell. Now we are still on the, on the detail now. So how did, what did they find? Less than 70 years, 70 and above. First thing they found was, this is very interesting. First thing they found was that immunoglobulin G against spike protein, the quantities in 70 plus or lesser than 70, the quantities were the same. So it was not a problem of producing the antibodies. Right. So remember, you are you are a researcher with me and we are a researcher with them if they allow us to be their team. And we're trying to figure out why does the immune system not behave correctly in a boosted individual who had AstraZeneca two doses and mRNA one dose. And we are seeing their blood and we're finding out that IgG levels are the same for spike protein both in lesser than 70 and above 70. Above 70 is not performing better. Lesser than 70 is performing better, but the quantity is the same. So they found out the quality is not good. So that's one. They saw that in the healthier, lesser than 70, 17% 17 of the B cells were non-neutralizing against Omicron compared to 22% in the 70 plus that were against non-neutralizing, that were non-neutralizing against Omicron. They also saw, this is very interesting, they also saw lesser number of naive B cells. And you probably would say, well, that is awesome. Lesser number of naive B cells is good. Correct. But even with the less number of naive B cell, the mature, that means mature B cells are more there. They found that in that mature B cell population, atypical or exhausted cells were more. So I would rather take a naive B cell that would mature into a functional cell than to take an exhausted cell and say, hey, you are a professional cell. Why don't you help us? And that professional cell says, all right, I'm helping. And that professional cell sits down at the desk to do some coding for us, but doesn't really produce any code. So these are atypical or exhausted B cells. So antibodies were being produced. They were not good quality. Cells were present, but the cells were also exhausted cells. Not all of them. I'm showing you the percentages. Then after the second dose, so their, their problem became that, all right, this is what we're seeing. What happens after the two doses versus the three doses? What is the problem with the booster? So what they saw was, after the second dose, healthier 70 or lesser than 70, I shouldn't say healthier, lesser than 70 had a modest increase in their various proteins, uh, antibody um, binding proteins and so on. They, uh, antibody binding protein, antigen binding proteins. They were more on the seven, lesser than 70, less on more than 70. But with booster, it actually became equal. So the B cells phenotype or the presentation on their surfaces were same after the booster. But as I said before, these B cells were mostly, I shouldn't say mostly, these B cells were exhausted as well. So they said, okay, let's look at the B cells then. Let's see how do they behave. And they found out that if you just take from all of the B cells that were active, 
in lesser than 70 or greater than 70. You take all of their B cells that are active, and then you see which of these B cells react to spike protein. There could be many other B cells that are reacting on, reacting with other things. So they took S-reactive, spike-reactive B cells, and compared them to lesser than 70 and more than 70. And they found out, check this one out, spike-reactive B cells in 70-plus boosted individuals, 30% of the cells were exhausted. Compared to lesser than 70 boosted individuals, only 5% were exhausted. So how did they find out which cells were exhausted? And they've given a signature here. The cells that had FC, fraction constant receptor for L5, or CD11C positive, which are TBET, and then CD21 less positive, these cells were exhausted B cells. And they found them to be almost 30% in the 70 plus boosted individuals. Then they said, okay, how about RBD, receptor binding domain? So they kept going from spike to the RBD to see what happens with RBD. And if you look at RBD, which is the neutralization target, they found out that the bad B cell, exhausted B cell, which were positive for RBD, were actually 39%. The more critical the area, <laughs> RBD is more critical to neutralize, to attack the RBD. So those cells that were able to attack the RBD were actually more frequently exhausted. So 39% were exhausted. Then they said, we also saw exhausted T cell or impaired, they use the word impaired. Then they saw impaired T cell response. And what does that mean? We have done this diagram many, many times for two and a half years. So that's why I didn't draw it in all its glory. This is the innate arm, right? So this is a dendritic cell. Dendritic cell is presenting an antigen to the naive T cell. Naive T cell in the presence of interleukin 4 and absence of interleukin 12 will become T helper 2 cell. T helper 2 cell would release many, many cytokines, including interleukin 4 and 5. That would cause a B cell to become an active B cell or plasma cell and start releasing antibodies. My pen is not working, so I'm just working with the mouse. So <laughs> my apologies for this weird, scratchy things. Okay. N. T helper 0 can become T helper 1 in the presence of interleukin 12 and absence of interleukin 4. Then T helper 2, sorry, two, T helper 1 can release interferon gamma to cause amplification of the innate arm. And it can also release interleukin 2 that would cause cytotoxic T cells to become activated. They found out. Now, here is a delicate, with this di diagram, you can actually understand the whole study. If you go this route, then the B cells are not functioning correctly. They're exhausted. So this route, going this route is not, isn't helping very much. If you go this route, then it is not that the B cell ex is exhausted, this cell is exhausted or impaired. They didn't use the word exhausted. Impaired. This route is impacted as well. So both route of response are impacted. They do say that compared to uh, each other, vaccinated and uh, sorry, boosted less than 70, boosted above 70, the zero conversion occurred, more antibodies were produced. So there was a positive outcome of immune response. It's just that the immune response's quality had become deteriorated in 70 plus. So I hope that this one diagram can kind of help us understand this pathway is impacted because of the end effector B cell is not working correctly. This pathway is affected because this middle cell T helper one isn't working correctly. And if the T helper one isn't working correctly, then it is not going to help the innate arm either. So innate arm is kind of not working correctly either. In lesser than 70 years, 
this behavior was fine. There was good interferon gamma production. There was good interleukin-2 production. But in 70 plus, the gamma interferon gamma and interleukin-2 production, these two guys were less. That means this arm wasn't working correctly. This arm wasn't working correctly. B cell were already exhausted. I have now said it about 10 times. Okay, so. And I'm going to read a few excerpts from their result near the end. This is the last part. So they said over here, initially, so they're discussing the B cells. They said, initially, B cells with this phenotype, the exhausted B cells, were characterized as exhausted or hyporesponsive memory B cells that formed after infection or in autoimmune diseases. Additionally, there an accumulation of atypical memory B cells in there is so typo here. Additionally, there's an accumulation of atypical memory B cells in older individuals, suggesting that biological changes that occur with age can favor skewing of the memory B cell pool towards the exhausted pool. The formation of atypical memory B cells can be supported by IL-21 and interferon gamma. So presence of these two can make more exhausted B cells and be inhibited by interleukin-4. So interleukin-4 or therapies that can help produce more interleukin-4 can help reduce the formation of B cell. Do you know why? I think you, you all know why, because we've been discussing it for a long time. This side, this pathway activation needs interleukin-4, right? So T helper 0 becomes T helper 2 in the presence of interleukin-4. Then T helper 2 releases further interleukin-4 to convert a B cell to a plasma cell. This is a follicular B cell's behavior. But if you do not give interleukin-4 and you still want a B cell to become active, then that is extra follicular B cell behavior that makes more atypical cells. So that means in an elderly individual, if we give more interleukin-4 or if they produce more interleukin-4, then this pathway will become activated and less exhausted, exhausted B cells will be formed. What a beautiful message. Therefore, these cells, so let me read it from here again. The formation of atypical memory B cells can be supported by IL-21 and interferon gamma and may be inhibited by interleukin-4. Therefore, these cells may emerge as natural consequences of the increased inflammation that is present in older people. We have previously shown that heme agglutinin-specific T follicular helper cells, those helper cells that are present within the follicle to cause affinity maturation, cells that are induced by vaccination have an enhanced interferon gamma gene in older individuals, indicating that atypical B cell promoting conditions exist in older people. So not only older individuals have higher interferon gamma and IL-21, but the vaccine so if you see here, induced by vaccination, the hemagglutinated T follicular helper cells would also cause more exhausted B cells. That's interesting. Then they say, this is the last part, then we stop. Then they say, although first described in immune pathology, it is now clear that atypical memory B cells emerge from normal B cell activation in response to vaccination. Most studies suggest that the majority of atypical B cells are non-germinal center derived, and I have already discussed what these are. We have previously described that AstraZeneca elicits a diminished germinal center response in aged mice compared to younger animals. So AstraZeneca vaccine itself has a way to push production of extra follicular B cells, which in 70 plus are exhausted. A lot of them are exhausted and we saw the percentages before. The poor germinal center observer observed in older individuals 
may necessitate the emergency of memory B cell via the extra emergence, sorry, emergency, emergence of memory B cell via the extra follicular pathway, which could explain the increased frequency of atypical memory B cells in the elderly. This pathway may not be as much favored in the younger individuals. Then they say, nonetheless, when poor immunity results from an accrual of atypical memory B cells, so let's say I'm aging and I am accruing exhausted B cells, or whether atypical memory B cells are generated due to a waning immune system, this increased frequency in older individuals reflects a clear difference in the immune response one month following a booster dose. It remains to be seen whether this dysfunctional state can be pharmacologically addressed or overcome by increased dosing. So they actually think at the end of the day, maybe increase the vaccine dose. I think that they need to figure it out that how do they, um, what is the cause of the exhausted B cells or atypical B cells as they call them, and then figure out how to prevent that or maybe decide for a different vaccine, you know, setup. This is AstraZeneca plus old age, both contributing. So this is the discussion. Once again, in the uh, description of this video, there is a link to 900 more premium medical lectures for a very low price. So take advantage of that. If you would like to support this work, there are some links in the description to support this work as well. You can buy me a coffee or you can become a member of Substack. You can use PayPal, you can become part of YouTube, you can become part of Dr. Bean, and so on. So with this, happy Halloween. Enjoy, and I would see you tomorrow or day after, depending. Nowadays, I'm uh, focusing a little on the business as well, and that is why sometimes I have to skip and take business meetings. <laughs> Ibrahim says, blue hair looking good. Thank you. Rima says, one size doesn't fit all. Correct. So this means that the type of vaccine, age, their inflammatory state, all of these things have to be looked at. That also means that vaccine alone is not a sufficient answer. There have to be more therapies, and we know there are some. There have to be more therapies looked at so that these kind of effects can be countered or prevented. So with this, once again, thank you very much for being here on a Halloween day. Like, subscribe, and share. That is the smallest fee that you can share with me. Thank you very much. I'll see you again.